so good. That's why I tried to gather as many emails as I could to phone numbers to thank people and, and it just uh, touched my heart to know how many hearts have been touched. It's, it's just, it makes me feel so great as a father and I want to thank you uh, from the bottom of my heart. And uh, I want to tell my friend here I have a whole bunch of bootleg Rancid tape said, I <laughs> so we have something to watch, you know, oh. in the future here. So it's, uh, so it's genetic. <laughs> uh, in the, uh, in the uh, uh, late 70s and 80s, I filmed many bands. I, it was like, but I had a movie camera that I used to put on my shoulder, and I film everybody from Johnny Winter to uh, Tom Petty's first tour, you know. So, and I saved all my films and, and, uh, and just loved it. But one time, Evan, he was 15 years old, and he says, Dad, Dad, there's this guy, his name is Devander Ban, uh, Banhart, and, I, and, and, I, and we went down to Big Sur, Big Sur, California, and Evan got a, uh, had a cold, just came down with a cold, and I said, uh, uh, we, were, we stopped, and we got there, it was, it was at this lodge, it was beautiful, and he was standing by the river, and uh, we just got there, still daylight. And I said, be careful, don't go too, too close to there and fall in, you know. And all of a sudden, I turned my back and I heard, whoa, 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 <laughs> splash. <laughs> he fell right into the river. <laughs> so I luckily had an extra jacket. I had only a pair of shorts that I was <coughs> swimming in in the back trunk. And I, they, we went into the lodge and thank God they had a fireplace. <coughs> I had to hang his socks, I had to hang his shirt, I had to hang his pants. And being at that concert, I never knew how many people knew Evan or just met Evan because they would all come up to me and say, is you're the boy the one you're drawing, drying the clothes out for? <laughs> and, it, and, and, and Evan was just a joy to go to concerts. We, we just went to a beautiful concert that they have in Golden Gate Park. Uh, the Harley Strictly Bluegrass Festival, mm -hmm. and uh, we enjoyed the Lumineers together, Head in the Heart, and just a beautiful set by Conor Oberst and Jenny Lewis, I believe her name is, and there is a song that goes like this a little bit. Take time to love me, take time to love me soon. And Evan turned to me, and he said, Dad, I, I love you. And I says, I love you too, Evan. And he gave me a big hug, and he'd always have his arm around me when we listened to music. And he was such a special person. And I lost a good music friend as well. And uh, that's why if I can share with any of you and email me and say, Hey, Craig, you want to go to a concert? I'd love to give you guys a hug and go to a show. And thank you very much. The last time I talked to Evan was about a title fight show, so I'm just going to play Memorial Field because that's how I have a song, and I think everyone like it. And I'm never playing in front of anyone. <laughs> 
verses, so please sing along because I don't like to sing. Okay. <coughs> always go to shows and he would always go to shows and I just remember he'd be like sitting there on his sidekick just always, <laughs> always texting somebody. I don't know how he knows that many people but you know obviously you know this many people are here. But uh, we just we've never really like never never like got like too close or anything but like like the couple times we like really hung out was just you just tell he's just such like a nice guy I always just wanted to have a good time and like, like no, I, I don't think I've ever seen him, like, mad or, like, sad. Like, maybe you just really get a hold of it in. But I never saw Evan, like, without a smile on his face, like, ever. It was just really cool. And uh, my, my favorite story about him, I, I get reminded once a week about, about something to Evan David. I remember I was, I was sitting in an airplane terminal. I was waiting to go from Iraq back to Germany. And I was sitting there for, like, 13 hours before a plane ride. And I was, I was sitting there on Facebook, you know, just like talking to anybody really. And then, then Evan is like, so, uh, so you coming back yet? And I was like, yeah. Like, he's like, so, uh, like, like I got to hook you up with this website, man. Like, you're just coming back from Iraq. Like, you're all like, like you, you're just gonna get all, all these moms are gonna love you. It's called Cougar Life. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he, like, he swore by this website, like you have to try it. Like it's, it's, it, I've, I've, met, I've met so many people on this website. I was just, so so like my last name's Urban. So I, I told him make me a profile because I was like I was like I'm not gonna do it, but if you do it, I'm not gonna delete it. So, so he, he made me uh, a profile. My name is the Urban Legend. <laughs> and I, I, I still get emails on my phone every time. And like usually, like, usually I just delete them. But it, like now I'm never gonna delete that shit. Because like, every single time I like new message from you know so and so on Cougar Life, I'm just gonna think about Evan. <laughs> that's what I have to share.
question that's still left unanswered. Play a lonely night, it's hard to get through. Cause I'm up reminiscing of everything we once shared. And you know I would take it back if I could. So I'll make this wish and hope. I miss you in California The place where you lay your head to rest Well don't worry, we'll see each other someday To make up for all the time that I try to start writing and thinking of how to best sum up the person Evan was to me. Then it hits me and I realize that no amount of words or songs or stories will ever be able to define all the time we had spent together. I think back five years ago to when I had first started getting to know Evan and it's crazy that so much, has, so much time has passed since then. I never really realized that he had always been there helping me grow up and steering me in the right direction. I can't thank him enough for everything he has done, and I hope so badly that wherever he is, he can see all of this and know how much he is missed and loved. Rest in peace, Evan, I love you. Evan was just about the most influential person I've ever been fortunate enough to know. He introduced so many people to the music industry and had a huge impact on many of our lives. I was never able to thank him enough for the continuous support he gave me with my photography. He attended some more shows out of anybody I've ever met. If you wanted to go to a show and had nobody to go with, chances are Evan was there. I will never forget one of the last times we got to hang out. It was at Harley Strictly Bluegrass. We were walking around Spreckroll's um, Lake in Golden Gate Park and found a man swinging around a decapitated turtle. <laughs> so, somehow we ended up with a turtle, so Evan walked over and placed it at the edge of the lake and we proceeded to have our own little turtle funeral. People were staring and taking pictures. Afterwards, he pretended he was going to jump into the lake and for some reason I just found it to be so hilarious. <laughs> Never would I have thought that this was going to be one of the last times I saw him. It still hasn't fully hit me yet that he's gone. I keep thinking that he's...
he's only seconds away from my school with his goofy voice. <laughs> hey, that's messed up. <laughs> you all loved it. <laughs> Unfortunately, our friendship was five years too short, and a million words won't justify how much I'm going to miss him. Rest in peace. Thank you. So, uh, I remember every time Evan would book a show, he'd always be like, Trevor, please, just, like, come shoot this show, like, I'll get you in for free, I'll do whatever. I was like, yo, like, I, I really just can't make it, like, I have a lot to do. So, like, what do you possibly have to do on, like, a Monday night? I'm like, yo, like, I work, and I go to school, so I, I have, I have to go to work. And he's like, work? Why? <laughs> and then I was, this was all on Facebook, and then I, I tell him like, "Yo, like I have a shift until ten o'clock." And and then after he read it, he called me, and he's like, "Yo, if you don't go to the show, I'm gonna call H and M and tell them I planted a bomb in the store." <laughs> And then every shift that, that, that he told me that, I, I was scared to death that every time the phone rang, he was going to be behind the phone. I planted a bomb in the store. Let Trevor out. It's just the funniest thing. Yeah. You guys got anything? Um, I didn't really have anything planned to say. Uh, I'm a really bad public speaker, but um, I met Evan about... A year and a half ago, uh, he booked me with a band I looked up to a lot when I was starting a pop-punk band, um, second to last, Tyson's band, and uh, we were grateful enough to get on the show, and um, I'd met him at a Lucky somewhere in Livermore or something like that, and um, I didn't know him that well for a while, and uh, recently, the past two months, we were hanging out every weekend and going to shows, and, uh, you know, like, he... I, there hasn't been a lot of people that have helped me out. I've kind of, you know, always been by myself on the music thing and no one's been on the same level as me. And he's always been one to help me out and help out my band and support everything I'm doing. And, uh, and um, he had a lot of faith in my band, uh, Harsh Vibes. Uh, in the hardcore scene, you know, he made fun of a lot of bands and <laughs> talked a lot of shit and, and it, was, it was hilarious to me. And so, you know, we came up with this thing called HV Crew and he was like, you know, fuck this scene, I don't support anyone. You know, break your records, rip off your friends. And uh, <laughs> so that was, uh, that was something we held a lot and uh, we always had this joke, uh, keep, uh, well, we always like made fun of like people that were like mad stoners and stuff. So we'd always say like keep it lit 420 YOLO. So uh, yeah. stoked we're keeping it lit tonight. And um, and it was great knowing him. You know he was he just stayed at my house the other weekend, telling me about how he wanted to start a band and go on tour and get out of here and do his own thing. And it's a shame that he couldn't fulfill that dream that he wanted. But um, I thank y'all for coming and supporting what I'm doing and being here today and that means a lot to me so thank you thank you